better. Hey. All right, uh, so next up we have a first time performance poet. Oh. Woo! A first time performance poet. What's the name you came up for yourself? 1v1 Kenobi. Ivy 1v1 Kenobi. 1v1 Kenobi. I can't believe yes. <laughs> Oh, you look tall. He's not. He's small. No, no vagina, Michael. Only in the rear view mirror. I don't know how to work this microphone style. I just pretended so I look cool. And now, now, now it's working the way that it is, so you might be tall enough to use it. Come over here. Ivy, you want me to know me? Good evening, everyone. Good evening. You have a choice. You always have a choice. You have a choice. Yay. I have three poems. Two of them are no good. Speak into the mic. <laughs> I want you to choose which one you'd like to share, just on, 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 on the theme. One of the bad ones. One of the bad ones. One of the worst one. Yeah. You can have the state of the planet. Yeah. <laughs> you can have lies and the fact that words cost nothing. Oh. Or... Um... Panspermium. So what? God or um, what was the choices again? <laughs> okay, who wants to hear a poem about God? Panspermia. Uh, God and panspermia are the same one. I made a mistake. <laughs> yeah, uh, the state of planet God or. Um, Oh, I'm so bad at this. Which one's the best? Uh, Do the best one, I'm fine. Words cost nothing. <laughs> Yay! Let's do it. Who wants to hear about lies? Yay! I'm having a great week and making my life simple into the bargain. Here are my tips. I've discovered that by spending all your wages in the first half of the month, you can severely reduce your choices for the remaining half, giving you that lonely little last neuron less to think about. With less choice, I am more free. <laughs> Instead of improving the mind, why not just re-remember what you did not know about forgotten? I was delighted to spend £1.20 of my remaining £40 of Mexican chicken roll, only to be reminded that I don't like spicy stuff. Anything that colours red, described as Mexican, will be spicy. As a bonus, I had jalapeno peppers in it, and I fucking hate them. The memories are now refreshed, and nothing important had to be deleted to make more space for as it happens when you're trying to learn new stuff. Stick to the same old mistakes. They become like old friends whose names escape you but are terribly familiar. <laughs> I've also been reminded this week of the importance of falsehoods and their greater usefulness compared to truths. This week I have read, Your CD is in order of two hours and you'll get it next week. In response, I'd not have my dad's birthday present. <laughs> I won't make it into work today. I've been unexpectedly asked to babysit as both the child and the grandparent who usually do it are ill and the mother has to go to work. This actually includes four separate downright lies, but the best place to hide the leaf is in a forest. The festival was good, practice lying. I could have said I didn't go to the festival, but it's much more important to get the experience of talking out your arse, especially when it's entirely unnecessary, as this trains the brain to blur the distinction between reality and fabrication, so allowing the more elaborate concoctions for the best place when you really need them. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> if you feel that you or someone you know may benefit from the simplicity of simply letting go of the truth, then read on for more, or in this case, listen. <laughs> <laughs> this is the advert for wordscostnothing.com. If you can fake sincerity, then you've got it made. <laughs> this quote from George Alibel was explaining his remarkable success with the ladies. His secret, instead of showering potentials with expensive gifts, he found a liberal sprinkling of costly and wildly inaccurate flattery to be far more effective. <laughs> his real skill was in making the most outrageously misplaced compliment sound sincere. More generally, a mission of the truth is on the whole largely beneficial. As an example, in this paragraph, there's very little truth at all. <laughs> so what if you're prepared to admit the truth, but just not very good at being trustworthy? This is where wordscostnothing.com can help. You can take your ethical dilemma or integrity deficit and turn it into a positive influence rather than a frustrating handicap. 
by outsourcing this moral headache to a service that is designed out financially and ex expensive or just plain cumbersome ethical considerations, you can gain the peace of mind that comes from keeping the unpleasantness at arm's length. <laughs> Businesses, let us discard your unhelpful reports and replace them with data tailored to your objectives rather than hamstrung by unhelpful facts. The military industrial complex and big pharma are just two examples of biggest industries who have come to see the harm that factual data does to bottom line figures and that the creation of data is a valuable tool in everything from health to regulatory safety and control. <laughs> Relationships. The female mind is predisposed to believing in any compliments no matter how unrelated to reality. <laughs> <laughs> Scientific research tells us that the female brain rewards itself proportionally to the unlikeliness of the assertion. With this simple tool, many common disagreements can be diffused and forgotten with the introduction of an unexpected compliment. <laughs> there are only three types of female, and we have a profile for each one. <laughs> the workplace. The workplace is a perfect environment to, to dispense with truth altogether and embrace the freedom that comes from telling them anything you like as long as minimum levels for plausibility and deniability are met. These can be set as a surprisingly low threshold and allow a lot of scope for ingenuity and with, where the incredible can become credible by satisfying the couldn't make it up maxim. <laughs> Training in face-to-face -face confrontations can prepare you for the moment when you face the incredulous stare with the implacable gaze, a truly empowering and rewarding skill, which will leave you smiling all day long as you consider the gravity of the offence you have just gotten away with. <laughs> Law. Riddled with loopholes and get-out clauses that you can drive a stolen horse and cart through. If there's any place where one can argue about the colour of sight, then this is it. <laughs> Precedents can be overturned and long-cherished law step. The only limit is one of imagination. For instance, did you know that invoking the Doppler effect in the defence of running a red light will be acceptable by all, by all but the most of the, all but the most academic of police officers. <laughs> the front line has a low entry requirements for producing officers, a very little brain, who are far more comfortable with proper police work like protest or rezoning, racial harassment and the extraction of confessions. <laughs> Some quotes. Faking sincerity can be invaluable in situations where prospects for success are increased by the withholding of facts and inclusion of disinformation. Regardless of the individual circumstances, any situation where truth is placed in an agent on the basis of information provided by that agent provides an agent for said provides an opportunity for said agent to increase its value of the deal in their favour by reducing the data's integrity. Mm -hmm. And again, the most important factor at play here is making the believable seem plausible. Tony Blair to a policy think tank for the Iraq war. <laughs> <laughs> Honesty is the best policy. Some loser said that. <laughs> the truth is not out there. It's in here. Ian Barry, founder of What's Cost Nothing. Yay! It's not all lies, it's not all laughs, there's some um, depressing stuff. Yes, but I have perhaps a hugely and possibly hopeful idea for changing the whole world in one day. Do you want to hear it? Yes! Take the power back. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Forever in a scurry, always glowing, blurry as we work, age, die, buy, 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 no prices too high, scorching the very sky as we get used trash. So where is this fire that seems to inspire this rush to acquire then only to expire? It's lit under our arses by jealousy of Joneses, stoked by greed for bigger and bigger bonuses, left to burn unattended as we wonder on who the onus is. Fueled by the fat of our serially raped land, fanned by the chorus from the media bandstand, consuming us as we consume the earth on which we stand. Stop. Slow down and think. Pause before we step over the brink. Listen 
So silenced and voiceless, look at the downtrodden and dispossessed. There's this nagging sense that something is wrong exists in all of us where the belief is strong that we all to humankind belong. This is our performance. We should sing the same song. For all it takes for evil to succeed is for the good to do nothing and pay no heed for when we do in the darkness they breed. It is time we were counted in thought and in deed. So imagine one day when instead of working away for the man who pays but you don't agree what he says, that we gathered together and pondered anew, pondered our choices. The difference is possible if we combine our voices, forgetting our differences and knowing they are small, and still, instead seeing the same humanity that exists in us all. How refreshing to not only anger, but do our efforts bent on change for the better. Something true. A powerful voice in this world full of noise from corporate behemoths and the lobbies they employ to speak up for the exploited, the hungry and the destroyed. Challenging everything. A little annoyed. <laughs> call it a strike, call it a protest, call it whatever you like, call it revolution. I would say evolution, I call it global day off. Progress and regress, this is the God one. <laughs> no one knows the child, nor even when he came to be, most certainly not why. Rumours abound, even firm beliefs found, and soon through need, the nameless miracle was named. Yet miracle remained, and being unexplained, the child had not one name but more. All different thought what they knew to be true, and so did others of other minds. Names and names and names became memes and genes and scenes of all that we've seen. But all the names are wrong, or only one is right. The child is God, my God, maybe God, but doubt it, your God, I have no idea. <laughs> Amino acid spawned us all in a passing asteroid that passed too close to save us being sown in a warm little pool. Could have been many meteors. But any ready and accepting pool would do. The opposite of special. Inevitable. <laughs> Panspermia disseminated by the great order do-gooders onto the accepting banks of Pangea's shores. Interplanetary fertilisation primordial ooze. The single parent to the bastard chimera child. Ask the ooze, or the travellers, or the space rocks, or the gods. Whether deaf or dumb, uncaring or inanimate, the silence... And that silence, same silence, never ends. So we answer the question ourselves as if we would become as sure as if rock had broken its silence. A Mobius or an acid respond pre-stimuli. Whatever. A burning bush has to say. Divine idolatry disguised only to unbelievers as food. Leaking statues or any other inexplicable miracle. <laughs> Nevertheless, between retardation... And progress, the child still has no name. Older, but a child just the same. Bolder, but without a backstory. Sold histories that at least one piece of this little child will never let go. Not even if every other voice is dissenting can the thought, the thinking, the belief enough to make belief real be relinquished. For a silent voice is a dead voice. No belief is a dead mind. Unthinking is unbeing. A child needs all its thoughts. Only growing in thoughts can prune the unnecessary. Beliefs cannot be replaced with beliefs. They can only be altered. Thoughts and voices must not be silenced without first being heard. And they must be heard with ears that have put aside their own mind in order to accommodate the hard to hear or comprehend. No one knows a child's name, but we are all its voice. No one knows the true voice, so no voice can be culled, lest it be innocent. Far too high is piled up the heap of those killed for their thoughts. For not gods or overlords are we with certainty to state our story. We are all threads of senses, self-woven into this child's tableau. None can be plucked without losing the whole. In all this child's fury, worry and woe, it is us, you and I, and all. Look upon us, listen to us. 
still the same child, yet supporting some other thinking, generally tolerant, so innumerable, that all wrong, or one right, each, in fits and starts, the child grows. Thank you. Big round of applause for Ivy One Kenobi. Yay! There you go. Uh, Chris is going to play a little tune now, and then we'll have a little bit more poetry from Zoe. Yay! Round of applause again. Woo! 